The other day, I walked into my barber, Tal. I sat down and he started to give me a haircut. And he gets up to my payas, my payot. He says, Rabbi, what's this? I said, this is my payot. I started growing them. He says, no, 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 I'm not touching this. I said, Tal, it's okay, just make it a little bit thin. He goes, no, I need I said, Tal, what's the deal? He says, let me tell you a story. He said, I was in the army and I was a barber for the army. And the army, they don't pay so well. So, you know, we go chick chak, yalla, let's go. And one time, a religious unit comes in. A soldier sits down. I start giving me a haircut. And he had like you these peyot, maybe even a little longer. But I just go ahead and oops, I take off a little more than I should have. I take his peyot off. I finish the haircut and he says, Tal, can I borrow your phone? I said, sure. He goes outside, two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, he's on the phone. Finally, he comes back and he gives it to me. And I was wondering, he says, well, who was he talking to? What, what just happened? So Tal tells me, he says, I have something on my phone called Klita, where I'm able to record every conversation that someone has on my phone. I'm not asking any questions. <laughs> it's very Israeli. I said, okay. He goes outside and he listens to the conversation. And Tal tells me, he says, you know who he called? He said, he called his Ima, his mother. And he was crying and he said, Ima, the barber just cut my peyote. And I'm feeling so bad. I'm listening. She's giving me chizuk. She's encouraging him. And I come back inside and I see him there. He's sitting there. I feel so bad. And I tell myself right then and there that I'm never going to touch someone else's peyote again. He says, so Rabbi, I'm not touching it. And then Tal looks at me and goes, but Rabbi, you want to know something else? That soldier, he didn't say a word. And he wasn't going to because he didn't want to make me feel bad. I felt at that moment like we were brothers. I'm listening to this story and I'm saying, wow. Here you have this Haredi soldier who's sitting getting a haircut from this barber and he cuts off his pay or something which is so dear to him, he was crying. And he didn't say one word because he didn't want to make him feel bad. You know, Haman says, Yeshna am echad mefuzar umefoyerad bein ha'amim. There's a nation, he tells Achashverosh, who's scattered, who's spread out amongst the people. And the commentaries explain that what Haman was saying, now's the time to attack the Jews, to destroy the Jews, because they're not together, they're not one. And Esther's response is, she tells Mordechai, Leich kinos kol ha'yehudim, go gather all the Jews together. The response to battle Haman, to win Haman, is when we come together. And that's what we did. And that's why as a result, if you look at Purim, what do we do? We give out Mishloach Manos, we're sending out presents. Matanos Le'evyonim, we're giving out charity. We're having a suit that we're eating together. And we even drink. What happens when you drink? All of a sudden you're giving out hugs. Everyone's your friend. Because that's the essence of Purim is for the Jews to come together. Why do we have to wait for a simcha or a wedding to dance with our fellow Jews? And why do we have to wait for a tzara or a funeral to cry with our fellow Jews? Why can't we be together and be sensitive to one another even in a barber shop? This Purim, invite someone over to your house who's different than you. It might be a little bit uncomfortable, but that's what family does. We stick together. And when we're together, and we care about one another, and we're sensitive to one another, then no one can touch us. No one can stop us. Happy Perm.